In this video for Math 98, we'll cover problems from homework number 5, section 13.2. These problems are like problems 1, 2, 3, 8, 9, 10, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 on homework number 5. Let's remember the laws of exponents from Math 94. If you recall, x to the a times x to the b equals x to the a plus b. And x to the a over x to the b equals x to the a minus b. And x to the a times x, x to the a raised to the b power equals x to the a times b. We also have the rules. xy all raised to the quantity a is x to the a times y to the a. And xy raised to the a is x to the a over y to the a. And this useful one, x over y to the minus a equals y over x to the a. All of these, if you need a reminder, just take an example like the first one, x squared times x cubed. If you think about that, this is x times x, and this is x times x times x. So that gives you a total of 5, and of course 2 plus 3 equals 5. So let's apply these to a few practice problems here. 1, 6 to the minus x. So exponential functions are going to use these rules of exponents. So 1 fifth to the minus x, okay, 1 sixth to the minus x, by this rule right here is going to give us 6 over 1 to the x. Of course, 6 over 1 is just 6, so that's 6 to the x. So that's not too bad. Why don't you try this one on your own for a moment? This, of course, would be 2 thirds to the y. And you could probably leave it like that. You could write 2 to the y over 3 to the y, but that's not really necessary. 8 times 2 to the n looks fine the way it is, but there are some problems where they would like us to write that completely in powers of 2. So since 8 is 2 to the third, and this is 2 to the n, we know by this rule of exponent, that if you have the same base, you add the exponents. You have the same base here, 2, so we're going to add the exponents 2 to the 3 plus n. Try this one. Let's see. 81 is a power of 3. That's 3 to the 4th times 3 to the n. So since, again, they have the same base, we're going to add the exponents. And they get 3 to the 4 plus n. So you need to pay attention to the directions in the problem. If it says all to write in terms of one power, you want to do this. These are equivalent, so both forms are OK. But it depends on what the question is asking. Here, 5 to the n over 5, we're going to use this rule right here. x to the a over x to the b equals x to the a minus b. Now remember, 5 by itself is just 5 to the first. So this is 5 to the n minus 1. Again, since the base here is the same, you can subtract the exponents. The base here is the same. It's 5, so you can subtract the exponents. So what would this one be? Again, this is 11 to the first. So this would be 11 to the n minus 1. These rules of exponents are useful when we work with exponential equations. We can solve exponential equations without the use of something we'll be learning in the next few sections called the logarithm if these exponential equations can be written to the same power. For example, 16. What do you know about 16? Well, you know that 16 equals 4 squared. And if you think about it for a minute, you also know that 16 equals 2 to the fourth. What do you know about 32? Well, 32 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. It's 2 to the fifth. So if I can write this exponential equation so that I have the same base on each side, I can probably find the value of n that is necessary. So this is 2 to the fifth. And 16 is 2 to the fourth. But remember, 16 is raised to the nth power. Now, using those laws of exponents we had on the previous page, this says you have 2 raised to the 4th raised to the n, so that's 2 to the 4n. And this is 2 to the 5th. Now, if you have an equation where you have the same base and you just have different exponents, these two exponents have to be the same. 
So I know that 4n has to equal 5. Because this base is the same, these two exponents here must be the same also. So that tells me that n equals 5 fourths. And that's your answer for that exponential equation. Let's think about this one. We already know that 32 is 2 to the fifth. And since 64 is 32 times 2, that's 2 to the sixth. That gives you 2 to the 5n equals 2 to the sixth, or 5n equals 6. Again, we have the same base, so those exponents must be equal, and that tells you that n equals 6 fifths. OK, let's look at this one. 9. Is 9 a power of 3? Yes, it is. It's 3 squared. So I'm going to write 9 as 3 squared, and that's 9 to the x is 3 squared to the x. And this is 3. So using the rules of exponents again, that gives you 3 to the 2x equals 3. Now what power do I have right here? Remember, I have the first power. So that tells me, again, since I have the same base, these two exponents must be equal. So 2x must equal 1, or x must equal 1 half. Similarly, let's look at this one. 1,000 is 10 to the third. And this is just 10. And I'm going to write 10 to the first so that I have an exponent there. That gives you 10 to the 3x equals 10 to the first. So 3x equals 1, and x equals 1 third. You can also use these problems where you have negative exponents. Looking at this problem, I know that 2 1 half is 2 to the minus 1. So now I think to myself, can 4 be written as a power of 2? And the answer, of course, is yes. So that gives you 2 to the 2n equals 2 to the minus 1. So 2n equals minus 1. So n equals minus 1 half. One more to look at. You might want to try this one on your own. OK, it's 3 cubed is 27, and 1 third is 3 to the minus 1. So that's 3 to the 3x equals 3 to the minus 1. So 3x equals minus 1, or x equals minus 1 third. So using the rules of exponents and finding the same base, you can often solve exponential equations. Now. Another thing is we learned that exponential functions are written in the form a times b to the x. So here we have an equation where we would like to write this in that form. Notice the exponent here is more than x. It's x minus 3. But using the rules of exponents again, I know that 3 to the x minus 3 is 3 to the x times 3 to the minus 3. And that's because you add these exponents Right? So this is 3 to the minus 3 times 3 to the x. And of course, 3 to the minus 3 is 1 over 3 cubed times 3 to the x, or 1 27th times 3 to the x. Now, if you're looking for a times b to the x, you have this in this form because a here is 1 27th and b is 3. Let's take a look at this one. y equals 2 to the x times 2 to the fourth. Of course, I can write that 2 to the fourth in front. 2 to the fourth is 16, so that tells you that y equals 16 times 2 to the x. Again, a times b to the x. a here is 16, and b here is 2. Why don't you try this one on your own and start the video when you're ready? OK. Write this as y equals 2 to the x times 2 to the minus 5. 2 to the minus 5 is 1 over 32. So that ends up being 1 over 32 times 2 to the x. And finally, this one, I can get y equals 2 to the x times 2 to the 1. And 2 to the 1 is just 2, so that's 2 times 2 to the x. 
It's useful often to have exponential equations written in the form a times b to the x. That way it's easy to see the growth rate and base and the coefficient. Another problem that we encounter in this homework is finding an exponential equation from data. So let's find an exponential equation of the form y equals a to b to the x with the graph passing through these two points. Now this point here is special. If you notice y equals a times b to the x, if x equals 0 and y equals 1, let's see what happens. That's a times b to the 0. But anything to the 0 power, you might remember that b to the 0 power equals 1, as long as b is not 0. So this tells you a equals 1. Now what this says is this point right here is the y-intercept. And a represents the y-coordinate of the y-intercept. If you know that, you could immediately write down that this is 1 times b to the x. If you're given the y-intercept, you can immediately write down that that is the y-coordinate right there. Now to find b, I have another point. So I would plug in that point now to find b. So 4 equals 1 times b to the x, x here being 1. So this tells you that 1 times b to the first equals b, that b equals 4. So y equals 1 times 4 to the x. Of course, you don't have to write that 1 times there. You can just write 4 to the x. So this is an ex exponential equation passing through these two points. So in general, to do these problems, you're given a y-intercept. Plug that in for a, okay? And then use your other point to find b. Let's look at that with this problem. We know y equals a times b to the x. And a here, because this is a y-intercept, because x equals 0, is 3. 3 times b to the x. So this is 4.5 equals 3 times b to the first. So b equals 4.5 over 3. So b is 1.5, and you get 3 times 1.5 to the x. So in general, if we have the exponential equation a times b to the x, the y-intercept is 0a, and if a is positive and b is greater than 1, this is increasing, and if a is positive and b is between 0 and 1, this is decreasing. So let's take a look at some problems here. Right here, we have y equals 9 to the x. Now, if you think about y equals a times b to the x, that means a equals 1 and b equals 9. So this function is strictly increasing from left to right. Let's take a look on our graphing calculator to kind of verify that. So I'm going to bring my calculator over here. And I'm going to clear this out. And I'm going to use 9 raised to the x power. Let me take a look at my window. I'm going to keep it uh, probably minus 10 to 10. I don't think I need um, y going quite that much. But if you look at this graph, you can see that as you go from left to right, this is strictly increasing. And that's because b is greater than 1, a is positive. y equals 7 ninths. Now notice here that a equals 1 and b equals 7 ninths. So since 7 ninths is less than 1, this one should be decreasing. Let's check that again on my graphing calculator. I'm going to go back to y equals. I'm going to put in parentheses 7 divided by 9 raised to the x. Draw a graph. And there you can see that that is decreasing as we go left to right. So this one, increasing or decreasing. A equals 1, and B equals 1.5. Since 1.5 is greater than 1, this is increasing. And here, A equals 1, and B equals 0.35. And since 3.5 is less, 0.35, excuse me, is less than 1, then this is strictly decreasing. I hope you have found this video useful.